So, hi everybody, my name is Andy. Um, today we are here at our booth at the Electronic um, uh, Embedded World Show 22. And uh, I'm happy to have uh, Victoria Hammond uh, from Microsoft at our booth. So, one of our highlights is our uh, uh, Windows on ARM based uh, boards. So, we have a single board computer and we have also other boards. Um, like the Pico Core, they're all based on NXP uh, 8 MP CPU. Uh, and uh, since two years, we are supporting uh, Windows on ARM on our platform. And it's great to have Victoria here at our booth. So, um, Victoria, um, you know, uh, right now we have the 8 MP platform boards available. We also have upcoming uh, iMix 9 series. So maybe you can share some information with our uh, customers uh, about the strategy yeah. separation of, uh, let's say, MX uh, um, 8 series versus 9, and you know, there's Windows 10, Windows 11, right. so maybe you can give some more information oh, about yeah. that. Happy to, and thank you for having me. Yep. Um, I think the first important thing to note is that we have Windows on ARM. It's maybe the best kept secret at Microsoft that we have this version of Windows that is yep. designed for ARM. Um, and it's definitely something we believe in uh, in terms of the future of our business. Um, with regards to your question specifically on the NXP IMX8 family and the 93 series, yep. um, Windows 10 IoT um, Enterprise is available for IMX8, NXP8, NXP IMX8. Lots right. of letters, yeah. <laughs> um, and that will be supported until 2032, so for eight more years. Um, beyond that date, if you want to continue with Windows 10 IoT Enterprise, um, you can purchase extended security updates, so yep. you will have a supported operating system going forward, but it costs extra money. Um, looking towards the future, um, we just released Windows 11 IoT Enterprise, and that will be available on um, NXP IMX 93. Cool. I'm really yeah. excited about it, yeah. and um, I would encourage you know all your customers who are thinking about long-term projects and building yeah. with uh, long-term support to really think about moving to IMX 93 um, and leveraging the new Windows 11 version that, that yeah. recently came out. That's that's great to hear. I think also for our customers it's important because longevity really matters in the in the industrial environment. Right. Also, we do have a lot of medical customers, so that's that's really that's really cool. There is another another really important topic, especially in Europe, upcoming Cyber Resilience yes. Act that we all hear about, so there's a lot of rumors. So by 2025, customers are really forced to have their cybersecurity concepts. Um, and uh, yeah, we know that um, Windows, Windows on ARM is a maintained operating system, which should help our customers really to, to deal with these uh, new regulations. Yes. So. Maybe you have also some information yeah. about uh, what's about the ecosystem around uh, this um, this very important topic. Yeah, I mean it's a really important topic for us as well going forward. It's something all our customers are talking about, and uh, given the kind of consequences of not being compliant, it's definitely yeah. top of mind for nearly everyone we talk to in the embedded space. Right. Um, essentially, from our perspective, the CRA, the Cyber Resilience Act, has uh, two components. The first being more of a product-focused component, which is really around what security features do you build into your product, okay. like encryption at rest and in transit, et cetera, or secure authentication. Yep. Um, you can find all the details online if you just Google it or Bing it. Yep. You know, um, sure. And uh, know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Windows as an operating system uh, meets all its requirements. So from a product perspective, it's compliant, um, yep. and it will be compliant, and we are committed to making Windows and Windows on ARM uh, the most secure operating system ever. The second component is really a bit trickier, I think, and that's really more around you as a manufacturer or developer, your organizational and operational procedures that you have in place yep. to ensure that you are capable of A, building a secure product, and B, um, reporting vulnerabilities as you find them and communicating out patches and stuff like that. Yep. And that really is an organizational question, right? It's what processes do you have in place Etc. to make that happen. Um, at Microsoft, we have that built in from the beginning of our product. So we've developed the um, Microsoft Development Lifecycle Framework. Right, That's yeah. a very comprehensive set of policies as to how we go about testing, modeling, etc., to yeah. ensure that our products are, are compliant and um, top of the range in terms of their security features. 
Um, we also developed a vulnerability uh, communication framework to make sure that we, as soon as we develop those potential vulnerabilities or we identify them, uh, yeah, we're yeah. capable of communicating them to our stakeholders in a really timely manner. And I think given one of the new requirements under the new law is uh, communicating any weaknesses within 24 hours of discovery, that is something that we do with our products anyway. Yeah. So it's something that you as a customer no longer have to worry about. So yes. essentially, if you're choosing Windows as your operating system, um, it will be compliant by default, and uh, we will kind of take away the burden of the operation piece as well. And that's sure exactly that we are, the key. Um, yeah, yeah, making, making yeah. that compliant. Yeah, that's that's very important. Because you know, we um, we still have a lot of customers using Windows CE. They yeah. are they are familiar with with Microsoft anyway. So and uh, uh, I think uh, having this 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 complete ecosystem over the complete lifetime, yeah. which is key, because right. you, you just, just we do have license costs, right? but you just pay once, and you got everything over that's the product right. lifetime maintained and operated, so yeah. I think that's that's pretty cool. That's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, so, um, many thanks, Victoria. Thank you. For passing by, giving us Happy all you. the great support, so many thanks. Great, thanks for having me. Okay.